this was just a very short illustration, illustration of what I really want to talk about. This is Mussorgsky, picture of exhibition, orchestrated by Ravel. The meeting of two geniuses. And the point which I tried to make that some of the pieces are maybe better on the piano. One or the other equal in brilliance, and of course, but a majority of the pictures are better with this brilliant orchestration of Maurice Ravel. <laughs> is an exhibition of pictures by his friend Hartmann and the composer really walking through this exhibition. He had a very clever, brilliant idea that the 10 pictures been connected with a so-called, he calls it promenade, which again brilliant move into the next mood of the next picture. So he used it as a sort of musical in introduction to the next picture. So the first picture called Nomus or the Little Man, Little Frightened Man, the illustration of the little frightened man is absolutely wonderful, musically wonderful, and I think orchestrated is even better. <laughs> little fellow is troubled, is afraid. And that description on the piano would be quite wonderful. He's afraid, he's hiding. Now, he, Ravel orchestrated the woodwind and the character of that woodwind, again, I can't do it as well on the piano, maybe I can't play it well, anyway, but the woodwind has a character which, which is incomparable. <laughs> We have to watch that the character is, he is frightened, he tries to hide all the time. No, not, this is, oh yes, and the very end of, don't overdo it, this for Satwem, not terrible wrong, because that is then funny, equally. It's neither, back, no, that's between. One. <laughs> next movement, next promenade, and make a contrast, Deutsche. He then brings back the promenade, but at this time on low horn, gently. He makes a slow movement to the next picture, Il Vecchio Castello, the old castle. Somewhere an Italian impression. Medieval castel, medieval castle, and the tru troubadour, il trovatore, singing outside. a singer. Now, Ravel had a wonderful idea. That beautiful melody he put on saxophone. And by that, the whole get a medieval sound. The real 
loneliness and lean, forgottenness and beautiful, gentle medieval sound. I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> The next promenade is, has again a little more heroic character, forte and rather somebody marching with very firm steps. Now, Ravel again used the full orchestra in beautiful effect. It's a pause. That's what he wrote in the piano. The next movement is the Tuileries Gardens. Children playing and quarreling. Mussowski wrote a, for me rather a strange tempo marking. He wrote Allegretto. I don't believe it is right. I think it should be faster. And of course, against also me, the orchestrator, because he orchestrated that difficult motif on oboe, and I'm certain when I rehearse that my oboe is say, oh my God, I can't play that in that speed. But I'm, I think a good player can do anything in any speed. So I am certain this is managed. sort of maximum pleasure would be that the beginning bar a little louder than the second and then make a little crescendo between you can help him in the middle a little crescendo would be wonderful that speed because that's another character the next movement is called Bidlow this is a card slowly driven by ox now here is the only, I think, the only dangerous omission by Ravel, that he totally changed the dynamic. He had a, envisaged something like a cart, an oxen cart coming from far away, get started very soft, coming nearer, get louder, and then again going out of the other side of the stage, so to speak, and get again soft. No, Mussolski didn't do that. Mussolski composed that immediately. In made as rest, the Bidlow is here before you, the oxen cart, fortissimo. And that's what Mussolski wrote. understand the reason. I even flirted with the idea to change that back to the Mussolski dynamic, but that would mean that I had to reorchestrate it. So I, I left it. I will leave it as it is.
picture which I see, this is, is a Polish oxen cart, heavy loaded with hay in summertime. And one man may be beside walking, but all is very hot and very heavy. The animals really suffer. But when the oxen come, arriving in full orchestration with side drum, if the illusion is heavy and terrible hot and difficult to carry, that is a wonder. Here are the little chickens, the ballet, he calls it the ballet, the little chickens. Now, this, of course, piano, very difficult, and one can do lovely things with it, but on the orchestra is this color of pizzicatos and piccolos and woodwind. This is quite remarkably wonderful. Okay, okay, before I repeat, would you do me one favor? Watch that we don't grow too much too quickly. They are not bulls, they're little chicks, as little as that. Not grow too. And he says something very enchanting. He says, ballet, dance. So it is a dance. <laughs> Come, we start on the art. That's the second time. One, two. You don't need as much pizza either. Now there, that's you. Try to make, don't break the trillion, don't break the trillion. Okay? Maybe you can do a little more discreet, pianissimo. Don't stick out. Tatiara, Tatiara! Appoggiatura. Tatiara! Okay? The title is, that is, two Jews. One is the rich one, with a heavy fur coat called Samuel Goldenberg. Other is the little one, the red beard, Shmuel, very little suffering, little complaining, little Jew. On the piano is the first part, the rich one, is absolutely beautiful also. It is really equal. Ravel orchestrated that on full string only. This is equally good on both ways. On the piano has this lovely register of the piano, while the string, most of it in G string, has a marvelous lamentoso. All the world heaviness and drama and sorrow is in that unison, is unison also on the string. While the little Jew, who is speaking too much, too fast, and want always something, is orchestrated with the muted trumpet, which of course is incomparable, wonderful. 
You can't do that really on the piano. It's half as good as on the top. The piano is like that. Then the two coming together. One is complaining, the other is do this strange kind of and they're playing together. Marvelous. Wait. is called Limoges in France, the marketplace. And the subtitle is La Grande Nouvelle, the great gossip. So there are women, marked women, who are selling things and big, big gossip going on. But they like a vicious gossip. Now, Musalski wrote to illustrate this gossip, Divers Forzatis, party on the beat, party after the beat, syncopated Forzatis. Ravel left out the accerti, like that. Ravel orchestrated only. <laughs> Why in Mussolski uh, is that? <laughs> All these heavy accerti accents. I will try to reinstate. I wrote it into the part, string as woodwind. Later on, it's all the time, it's like that. I hope it is working. Now, let's make half speed that we see how this accent is going. I give you anyway, three, four, three, four. Forte. Now, here's the first. Roman group, underground cemetery. This is one of the most beautiful Mussolski pieces. Harmonic invention is brilliant. which I just played, he writes, strangely enough, crescendo. But how do you do crescendo piano? Once you put the tone down, there is no more, no way to make a crescendo.
देखिए Before Mussorgsky left the catacomb, he reflects about the mood of the catacombs. He used, although he used the promenade motif once more, but in a very strange, sad way, he has a subtitle to this, Con mortuis in lingua mortua. This is simple. This is the gate motif, but in a very gentle minor key. Soft, soft, soft. Let the wood be clean. It's not you, Connor. Soft. My dear string, soft, please. Soft, soft. Now we are arriving to Baba Yaga, which is a, well, a Russian legend, I suppose. We have our legend also the witch living in a big castle. The music has an amazing tonality. Late romantic early Schoenberg. I would say, or early Stravinsky. Ah, I swore Sato, listen. Sorry. There is for Sato. Put it in. On two, every bar on two is for Sato. The Baba Yaga leads straight into the grey gate of Kiev. And this is a beautiful piece of music, starting in one forte and ending up with three forte, in the middle a gentle sort of candlelight procession, the monks. Now the music starts like that. Sounds equally wonderful on piano also, but when it comes to the end, when bells and cymbals and the whole weight of a tutti orchestra playing, I think it is quite magnificent. <laughs> I feel that there are, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are a few movements which probably better the piano, like the introduction, like the rich tune. But there are a few movements which definitely gain enormously through the orchestration of Ravel. To conduct this masterpiece is one of the joys of my musical life. The collaboration between the two geniuses over the half a century is a miracle. 